Hey, what's up guys? My name is Norton. In today's video, we're going to be looking into the vehicle DLC prices which we are going to be getting next week on July the 8th for the Ill-Gotten Gains DLC Part 2. Now, I'm basing all of these prices on estimations I have made myself, judging from the previous DLC and the style this DLC brings to the game. But before I go on with this video, I just want to mention I am hosting a $2,000 giveaway and if you want to know more information about that, then be sure to click the link in the description below. But let's start off the list with the best car of the bunch, or at least what looks to be the best car of the bunch. And we have this supercar, which is the Progen T20. The Progen T20 has been shown off in two pictures in the Old Gotten Gains DLC Part 2. One picture was in the actual thumbnail of this DLC, and the other one is this one, which you can see right here, showing the beauty of this vehicle. Now personally, if I had to slap a price on this, I would price it over $1.75 million. The reason why I'm pricing this so high is because the previous supercar, the Osiris, was in fact $1,950,000. So it's going to be somewhere around that area, but I'm going to be a little bit optimistic and slap it at $1,750,000. Now going into the classic sport car section, we're looking at the Invitro Coquette Black Fin. If I had to slap an estimation price on this, I would have to range it from $800,000 to $1,250,000. This is because the Benefactor Sterling GT, which was a previous sports classic we got in the previous DLC, was $975,000. So it's going to be somewhere around that region, given the style and make of this vehicle. Going into the Coil Brawler, this is not going to come cheap. The reason why I say that is because this is an all-round 4x4 amazing off-road vehicle. If you had to ask me, it looks like one of the best off-road vehicles and it looks like it's got some speed to it as well. Judging by everything to do with this vehicle from what we can see right now and the make of it being Coil, I'm going to slap a nice price of $400,000. I know it's quite expensive, but I don't think it's going to be too expensive given that this is overall an off-road car. Taking a look into the Vapicino, I would have to slap a price of around $200,000 onto this vehicle. I wouldn't go any higher than $400,000 if I had to make a range. The only reason why I'm doing this is because looking at the Albany Virgo, which was in the previous DLC, it's a similar type of car to this. Only this car has better customization options and looks like it's going to be more representative in the game. Which is why I'm going to class this vehicle as more expensive than the original $195,000 price slap we got on the Albany Virgo go in the last DLC, so I'm going to call this $200,000 to no more than $400,000. Moving on to the motorbike, we're going to take a look at the Dinka Vindicator. Rockstar originally described this motorbike as a luxury item, and judging by the original prices we have of motorbikes in the game, they're all not too expensive, or at least incredibly expensive compared to the prices we have on cars. But no doubt will this be a luxury item and something which is going to be worth showing off in the game. I mean, just look at this motorbike, it's definitely something new, something which shows style to your character, and it's an absolute beauty. So I'm going to slap a price tag of around $500,000 for this Dinka Vindicator, which is of course a luxury item, and it looks like it could be, or at least a good bet, for the fastest motorbike in the game, therefore maybe one of the best. Now if you are looking to waste some money, then go and get yourself the Lambadati Toro. The Lambadati Toro, once again, looks like a luxury item, and it looks like an item maybe for the Elite. The reason why I say this is because of the woodwork on this boat, the unique style. In addition, we're going to look at these features, for example, the leather couch we see behind, just the amazing and luxurious woodwork as well as the horn stylishly placed at the front and what looks to be what could be the engine placed at the back, ready to show off to anyone who is looking at this boat. Now judging by the offshore of the water, this boat reaches some very high speeds, so I'm going to put a price tag of at least $1 million on this boat. However, this could exceed up to $5 million, just judging by the prices we saw in the Ill-Gotten Gains DLC Part 1, where the helicopter painted gold, as well as the plane painted gold, range from about $5 million to $10 million, for something which really, in my opinion, shouldn't be worth that much. But nonetheless, I believe this will be the luxury item which will be well overpriced in the next DLC, so expect a huge price tag on the Lambadati Toro, which once again is influenced by the luxurious vehicle Lamborghini. 
So there we have it guys, I have shared with you exactly what I believe these vehicles will be priced in the DLC on July the 8th, however I must stress that none of these are confirmed, these are merely my best estimations compared to what we have seen in the past, and just judging on the vehicles all around. If you agree with this list let me know in the comments section below, but if you don't agree with this list that's fine as well. Let me know your estimations in the comments section below because after all an estimation is an estimation, and I want to see who gets closest when this DLC does come out. So if you want to try and place any bets on what you believe these vehicles will be priced as in the next DLC, let me know your thoughts in the comments. But as always guys, I hope you did enjoy this video, if you did, be sure to slap a like button in the ratings and subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss out on any more Grand Theft Auto 5 content every single day. But guys, my name is Nort, and I'll catch you guys next time.